we bring you this breaking gold news report tonight. About an hour ago, I was jolted right here in, in uh, Southern California by a little earthquake. And I was reminded of something that came up a while back about gold and earthquakes and that whole thing. So I thought it'd be a fun topic to just kind of broach that a little bit more and uh, talk about quakes and gold. But to uh, give you a little hint, uh, we had a we had a quake come through, uh, 3.7. It was upgraded from a 3.5. Um, I felt it because I was I was actually kind of sitting on the floor working on something, and and uh, all of a sudden I felt this kind of like thump thump, and I thought somebody's jumping around in the building. You know what's going on? And next thing you know, I felt this thump 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 thump, and then all of a sudden, bump bump bump, and you hear this, chick, 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 and I said, ah, now I know what that is. <laughs> That's a quake. So uh, I thought I'd talk about it a little bit because it's kind of fun. They have this uh, whole thing that they do with the USGS here in Southern California. Uh, there's, a, there's a Southern California Earthquake Center, SCEC, and they are out of, I believe, Caltech. But what they specialize in is kind of giving you latest up-to-date stuff. So tonight we're, pro you we're sponsored by 2020 uh, gold and water and water flow and how it moves. I probably should have a, a earthquake and gold, but I don't. Uh, but maybe we will in the future. Um, so gold and water flow, check it out. Uh, that's the report. Uh, Sourdoughminer.com slash 2020. Um, so what we're looking at here is this uh, <clears throat> interactive map that shows kind of what happened. And as it developed, it's kind of interesting because you get these maps that show you know, details about where the quake was likely felt. And of course, I'm right over in this area here, um, which I don't know whether you can see it or not, but that's where I am right there. Got my finger on the spot. So anyway, um, and so I felt a pretty strong uh, impulse and shaking of it. But it's interesting, clear down here. Now, why, why do I bring that up in gold? Well, because there's this whole thing about gold and some rethinking about mechanisms for it. Now, I've attributed that mechanism to be a piezoelectric one. <clears throat> there is also another mechanism. You know, all these are hypotheses, unless you can climb down underneath this thing, go 15 kilometers deep, and sit there and watch when an earthquake goes by. You're not going to know whether it's caused by a piezoelectric effect or flash plating because of, of expansion of the rock, a sudden a sudden reduction in pressure. Both are possible. In fact, it's probably a mixture of the two. Compression would cause the piezoelectric effect or distortion of the crystal, not the crystal, but the material that's there if it's got quartz. Flash would occur if there's hydrothermal material that contains quartz and metals and other things. If that all of a sudden, when there was an expansion for a moment, there was a vacuum or sub, sub, um, what we call, uh, the vaporization pressure or vaporization point of water for the pressure that it's at. So, you know, higher temperature has to have higher pressure to hold it as a fluid. If it goes below a certain point in pressure, pop, it expands and explodes into, into a hydrothermal gas. <clears throat> and so what happens is when that happens, that flash will leave any metals out of that fluid and massive amounts of crystals form. Now, either one is a possible mechanism. Uh, that one seems to be favored by, I believe it's the University of Canberra. Uh, I thought I'd show you the references to that just for completeness here. Um, let's go back to where that was found. And so, <clears throat> earthquakes turn water into gold, the tyrannosaur of minerals. This gold nugget quartz may, weighs more than 70 ounces. So this one's talking about how gold plates out, and in particular how it plates out into these kinds of crystals, right? Which are pretty darn impressive if you think about it. Um, but the idea is that gold and earthquakes go a long way to explain why that might happen. Either mechanism. So I was thinking of that earthquake and I thought, gee, you know, it'd be a good thing to talk a little bit more about this gold and what happens when it flash plates. Because, you know, it's pretty amazing when you get these crystalline forms in the middle of this fluid of quartz. How did it get there? Well, you know, there's a lot of mechanisms that could lead to it, but that's one key one that they think is the, is the key, is that the water itself 
you know, leaves the gold behind for just an instant. The water can re-precipitate once the pressure builds back up again, you know, because a quake is just a series of pulses. And the pulses aren't all compressional. There are expansions that occur. And that was part of what got me into it was I was sitting in the room and I felt you know, and had this discussion with my son who was on the other side. You know, if, if the floor was moving like this, you know, then that gives you kind of an axis of motion. And I've been pretty good at predicting him. I missed this one a little bit. He was better at it than I was. But when you get that kind of motion in an earthquake, you get what they call a butterfly. And that is there are compressional forces on one axis and there are expansion forces on the other axis. And so, uh, and you've seen it in the form of a three-dimensional picture. If you've ever seen an earthquake basketball, they call them basketball diagrams which show you the, the plates at which the, the quake fractured and where the expansion occurred and where the compression occurred. Because you get expansion, you gotta have compression. They, they complement one another. That's the way rocks shear and, and the way uh, compression and expansion occurs in a rock as it's transmitting energy. So I just thought I'd touch on that for a moment because it's a fun topic, uh, dumping gold into the cracks and fissures of our friendly earthquakes. Um, <clears throat> so I hope you guys uh, are enjoying the summer so far. Uh, like I said, check out the gold water flow, Sourdough Miner 2020, and uh, let me know what you think. I had somebody call in tonight um, talking about it because they had some questions, and they brought up that they were talking about that they had some boulders and stuff in the desert and, and all that, and I realized, oh, that's the jointing discussion we just had last night. Go look it up. And while you're at it, the 2020 talks about the water flow that drives the gold from those kinds of deposits. But the picture that he showed had that classic, you know, these boulders are stacked too neatly to be simply a random bunch of water flow. It's, it's, it's jointing and, and decay. That same kind of stuff. So what he has is, again, it's a lot of granite. That's what he's identified it as. So, yes. We're right in that category. Take a look at last night's broadcast and check it out because it's going to be fun. Also, make sure you check out what I have over on, on uh, again, Sourdough Miner. We've got blog posts and all that good stuff. Hunting for Gold, same thing. Blog posts on gold and gold prospecting. Check that out. There's also a products page there. You can check out other products that we have. It's worth looking into. As well as uh, other topics and, and videos that we had from earlier broadcasts. So take a look. And let me know what you think. Uh, comment below. This is Prospector Jess from SourdoughMiner.com and HuntingForGold.com. I hope you have a good day and good prospecting. Uh, let me check to make sure everybody's here. And I'm going to break away pretty quick here. Part of what's going on, my brain is kind of fried. That was a comment from uh, Son, who's getting married on Saturday, about prints to be picked up and stuff. And a trailer hitch that I just built in the living room to go into a trailer to move stuff around so that he can take it to. We are going to go to the... Uh, uh, what's it called? Anyway, it's a it's a air museum, and they're going to have the wedding in the air museum. And I might be able to do a little short broadcast from there. That'd be kind of fun. Um, but there's a collection of World War II planes and World War One and World War Two artifacts and things left uh, at the Camarillo Airport, and that's where they're going to do this stuff. So it'd be fun. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. But of course. You know, part of how he's saving money to do this is uh, a lot of the stuff he's doing himself. So he and his bride-to-be have designed and planned one of the most interesting weddings I've ever seen. This is going to be a lot of fun. So catch it live um, if I get a chance. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's check in on you and make sure we got people coming through. And then I'm going to peel out for the evening. And we have, what do earthquakes have to do with gold? Eight comments. So, welcome everybody. And that'll probably be it for tonight's broadcast. Adam's here. Ah, ain't the stretch of land supposed to fall in the ocean? Well, actually it's going to skirt along and we're, we're cruising north while the rest of them kind of stay put. We're going to head up towards San Francisco where it's more liberal. <laughs> oh boy. Yes, Wisconsin here. Yes. Okay, Steve. Good to see you. Good to hear you. Vic Ty. Great show. Very informative. Very well presented. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I appreciate people who appreciate it. 
uh, comment below. Let me know what you think and what you want to hear more of. I'm always open to getting more input from the audience about what direction we go to on each day, and you never know what I'm going to do. We're still working on that gold tails thing, by the way. It's just, it's a long deal. So, <clears throat> uh, Everett Holland says, great show. Thanks for your knowledge. Well, you are welcome, and thank you for joining. I uh, appreciate that. And uh, like I said, check out the Gold Prospectors material on sourdoughminer.com and huntingforgold.com and join our email. Uh, join in and get, uh, get our newsletter and stuff. So I will catch you guys later. This is Prospector Jess over and out. Good night and good prospecting. Have a great one. Hope I don't go too crazy trying to get this stuff done in time for Saturday. <laughs> Earthquake is the last thing I need. <laughs> Catch you then. Good night.